Welcome to Fast Click Massive Tutorial. This video will cover the modulation pages and I will be providing you with basic knowledge and examples if necessary. This consists of 8 tabs. 1 to 4 are envelopes and 4 to 8 are assignable modulation sources between LFO, Stepper and Performer. To configure individual modulation sources, simply click on the tab and to apply the modulation sources, click on the modulation handle and place it in the modulation slot. These modulation tabs are in blue. They are designed according to the ADSR scheme. This stands for Attack, Delay, Sustain and Release. This is a term referring to the amplitude envelope. The envelope tabs also has special features related to the sustain stage and trigger options. The shape is presented on the graphic display. It shows how the signal assigned will arrive and exit. Starting from the left, there is an envelope preset selector where you can select a factory preset or user preset. The save button saves current displayed envelope settings into a user preset. The delete button is for deleting user presets. Factory presets will not be affected if they are listed. Trigger mode switch causes the envelope to re-trigger every time a new MIDI note is received. This being deactivated will use its current level at its starting point and will re-trigger when the previous notes are released. This switches the decay shape from logarithmic to linear. By default the attack shape is linear, while the decay and release are logarithmic. At the far left you will see another set of global controls that modifies the envelope response to incoming MIDI notes. There are three options, gate, one shot and hold. This is when you press the key and the envelope is started and read to the end unless the key is released earlier. In that case the envelope will jump straight to its release stage. This is when a key is pressed and the envelope will be read till the end regardless of when the key is released. This will read the full sustain stage including any possible loops. This is when a key is pressed and the envelope will read until the sustain endpoint including possible loops. When the key is released, the note will remain playing. The envelope will only be triggered when a new note is pressed a second time. However, this will not stop the note itself playing. If you press a key while holding down the initial key, the notes will play in a stacked mode. This is useful in creating chords and also in live situations for generating rhythmic soundscapes. There are also two faders placed at the left of the center window. This controls the influence of the incoming MIDI notes velocity on the overall envelope amplitude. In other words, pressing the key softer will be quieter while still following the envelope settings. Setting this to the top will influence the incoming MIDI notes velocity to 100%. This controls the influence of the incoming MIDI notes pitch on the overall envelope amplitude. The higher the pitch, the smaller the envelope amplitude. This is placed at the bottom of the left. It adjusts the delay time between the time you hit the key and the time when the envelope initiates. Next to this control are the parameters of each envelope stage. This takes the signal from zero, or no sound, to the maximum value of amplitude you have set. This consists of two controllers. The attack time control adjusts the time needed for envelope to rise from zero to the first maximum point. Turning the controller to the very right smoothens and lengthens the attack. This sets the maximum amplitude point. The higher value, the more effect, and it will give an initial punch to your sound when triggering a note. The decay stage goes from the attack's maximum value to the sustain stage. This consists of two controls. This adjusts the time needed for the envelope to go from the maximum value of the attack to the decay point. This sets the amplitude of its final point, and this also sets the value of the sustain stage. 
The sustain stage has two special features. This allows you to play the sustain stage of the envelope back and forth a set number of times. This loops between the decay and release stages. This provides you with two selectable sustain shapes, allowing you to morph the main sustain shape. Here are the main sustain stage controls. This lets you adjust the time between sustain start and end points. Turning this to the very right will increase sustain duration, which lowers the speed of the envelope. This sets the amplitude of the sustain endpoint. This control allows you to adjust the main sustain shape using the two reference sustain shapes chosen from the sustain morph pop-up menu. When this control is at the very right, it follows the sustain morph choice from the top menu. In between will be a mixed version of the two morph choices. This is all shown on the graphic display. Below the two pop-up menus, there is a small selector that allows you to define how many times the sustain stage will loop. However, instead of looping from start to finish, then back to start, this loops forwards then backwards. If the loop is off, the sustain stage will be ignored depending on the play mode selector. One loop represents the sustain stage playing from left to right. Two loops will play left to right, then left again. Then this will jump to the release stage, and so on. The maximum loop setting is up to 32 half cycles. This means that the loop will go back and forth 16 times. The infinity section after the number 32 will play the loop non-stop. When the loop is activated, two dots appear at each side of the sustained stage. The white dot indicates which side of the loop will end. This defines the end of the envelope and only has one control. This adjusts the time for the envelope to fade to zero or no sound. The last four modulation tabs allows you to choose from the following three modulation sources, LFO, Stepper or Performer. These tabs are displayed in green. Clicking on any of the green tabs will display a similar top bar menu but with a mono button. When this is activated, it will force the modulator output as a monophonic modulation signal, regardless of how many voices are played. This function is useful to synchronize modulations of different voices. For example, the monophonic setting works in the same way as the monophonic in the voicing page, where only one key is played at a time. With the mono modulation activated, it will only modulate one note at a time on a sequencer. For any notes overlapping each other, the first incoming note will stop being modulated as soon as the second note is triggered, thus initiating and restarting the modulation signal again. The mono being deactivated will allow the modulation to affect every note played and displayed. This button allows you to select the type of modulation you want and will set the tab name of your chosen modulation source. All three modulation modes share the same left block of controls. This adjusts the speed of the modulation source. When the sync is engaged, this synchronizes the modulation source with the master block or external sync. The rate control then becomes a ratio control with two number fields, allowing you to specify the duration of the modulation in beats per bar. The top number field represents the cycle or bar. The bottom number field represents the beat per bar. The upper value determines the actual length of the bar as multiples of the lower unit. When this is activated, it re-triggers the modulation every time it receives a new note. When it is deactivated, the modulation source will run in the background and pick up the new notes in its current modulation signal position. This works in a similar way as a modulation amount setting which is done through modulation slots with the coloured rings. However, the amplification control adjusts the amplitude for all targets that uses the selected modulation source, whereas modulation amount works individually. 
This stands for low frequency oscillator. It is an electronic signal usually being at a low frequency that a human ear cannot interpret as sound. This signal usually creates pulses or sweeps. Under the LFO tab, you will see on the left side two graphic displays of selective LFO waveforms. By default, the top is a sine wave and the bottom is a sawtooth. Masso's LFO is actually a double LFO. The modulation source features morphing function, which allows you to interpolate between two waveforms, kind of like the sustain stage in the envelope. The morphing can be adjusted using the X-Fade curve slider. Sliding it to the bottom represents the bottom wave shape only and vice versa. This allows you to select a common wave shape. There is also a curve morph pop-up menu giving you access to more complex wave shapes. Dragging the waveforms across left or right on the graphic display will set the starting phase of the waveforms. In other words, you can pick how you want your sine wave to start, whether at the peak, the middle or the trough. The right part of the page contains a useful feature like the oscillator page. It has an internal envelope that can modulate the LFO parameters. You can use this to modulate the rate control if the sync switch is deactivated. The amplification control and the curve morphing control can also be modulated by this envelope. This is a step sequencer that allows you to define each step having a specific amplitude. These steps are read in looped sequence which technically recreates a new waveform signal used as a modulation. Stepper has its own control on the top bar, called Snap to Grid. This mod allows you to create accurate amplitude levels when adjusting each step by clicking and dragging upwards or downwards. When this mode is deactivated, you can adjust these amplitude levels more specifically and human. The page is mainly covered by the stepper graphic display, showing you different steps. Each step has a bar that corresponds to the amplitude. For fine adjustments, hold down the shift key while dragging your mouse. On top of the display, there is a loop bar which represents the step numbers. On this bar, there is a yellow triangle which represents the starting step. This can be adjusted by clicking and dragging the triangle to the preferred step to be initiated from. As the stepper plays in a loop, the numbers highlighted at the top represents the loop range. By editing the loop range, you can click and drag the start or end of the loop, going left or right. The loop speed is controlled by the rate or ratio control. At the left of the stepper graphic display, there are two faders. This adjusts the glide between the previous and current step. It is used to create softer transitions between each step. Turning the fader all the way down to the bottom will turn off the glide mode. When turned all the way up, the glider is at its maximum. This adjusts the overall amplitude of the modulation defined by the step sequences. When the fader is at the bottom, there will be no effect. Both of these faders will not affect the modulation step sequences unless it is activated on the step activation rows under each step. The fader can apply to each individual step in the sequencer. There is a box under each step and when it is activated, it will be highlighted in blue. The top row connects to the glide modulation and the bottom row connects to the amplitude modulation. The stepper shares a similar button on the top bar as the performer, however they are slightly different selection wise. This is a pop-up menu button that allows you to select randomised settings between randomising levels only, randomising the glide buttons on the activation rows, or randomising all, including the amplitude bars, glide and amplitude buttons. After selecting the desired randomization setting, clicking on the square button will randomise every time it is being clicked on. This modulation source is very similar to the stepper but you can say this is a more complex version of it. It generates step sequences with the aid of waveforms instead of amplitude bars. It also includes the morph function which allows you to interpolate between the two sequences. 
At the top bar menu, there is a button called Load Curve. Clicking on this button will provide you with a window temporarily replacing the left block. The window provides you with selectable waveform shapes. You can apply a selected waveform by clicking on a waveform, which will highlight the selected waveform. Once highlighted, click on a desired step and it will sign the chosen curve. Clicking the Load Curve button again will close the window. Adjusting the amplitude on this is similar to the stepper by clicking and dragging on a vertical axis on each curve or step. This also includes a loop bar at the top, with the same adjustable settings as the stepper. The loop range is also edited in the same way and the loop speed is controlled by the rate or ratio control. This mode also has two faders. This control works the exact same way as the stepper modulation. This adjusts the interpolation between the two displayed sequences. If the fader is at the very bottom, it will only use the bottom sequencer for the modulation signal, and vice versa. The middle will play the signal created by the two wave shapes of each sequencer. The faders are only affected if selected on the step activation rows in the same way as stepper. The top activation row applies to the morph control and the bottom applies to the amp modulation control. Activation and deactivation works the same way as the stepper as well. This modulation source also includes its own random button, however it has more choices in the pop-up menu than the stepper. Anything labelled with upper settings will only apply to the top sequencer, and anything labelled with the word lower will only apply to the bottom sequencer. In general, you can randomise the amplitude, or the waveform shapes, or the performer which applies to both. This ends my tutorial. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to my channel.